Hi Internet, uh, thanks for watching another episode of mine. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Um, cross-site scripting or XSS is one of the most common vulnerabilities you'll find out there. Um, it's also uh, number one in the OASP top 10 vulnerabilities that have been published in 2013 and it hasn't really gone away. Um, so I want to talk to you about it because it impacts um, a lot of websites um, and you have you want to make sure that when you are developing your application, especially specifically your web application, that you keep it secure. In order to understand what cross-site scripting vulnerability is, we have to take a little step back and talk about an HTTP connection. So an HTTP connection is a stateless connection, meaning a request is made and there is a response to it, the end of the connection. The next time another request comes in um, and response is sent back, again, connection ends. Now, the trick is if you have traffic going back and forth between the client and the server and you want to be able to differentiate between two different users, you have to somehow identify them. And the way how this is done is through cookies. So these are uh, long uh, random characters uh, I compose a, a string and that's your that's your uh, session ID and the server keeps that in memory for a specific uh, time frame while it sees that there's a request and response going back and forth if I as a user want to go to a bank uh, as I log in or as I access the site for the first time uh, a session ID is created a session is created on the server that contains some other variables that are kept on the server in memory and um, the session ID is sent back to my browser and every time I click on a different link on the site, that same session ID is sent back to the server and then the server knows that it's me that it's interacting with rather than someone else. Uh, when I talk about violation of, of client's privacy, what this basically means is that um, that session ID is exposed to um, an attacker. So instead of keeping it secure between me and the server. Now a third party potentially has access to this session ID and can pretend to be me. And obviously this is a very dangerous uh, scenario and it can result in um, elevating privileges on the server. So for example, um, I'm an administrator of a system and I'm interacting with that system through a browser and somehow I get exposed to this cross-site scripting vulnerability and uh, my session ID is leaked to an attacker, well, an attacker can then create their own account and basically elevate their permissions up and become an admin and do a lot of damage or they can uh, get uh, sensitive data out of the server. So that's obviously um, you know, pretty bad and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. How can a user be exposed to a cross-site scripting attack? Um, it's actually fairly simple if, if uh, not enough protection is in place. Um, it basically consists of um, inputting into one of the input fields on the screen, for example, um, a piece of JavaScript. Then, then it can be saved on the server or it can be reflected back to another user. The, the second um, exposure you'll see is when you have an email client that tries to render an HTML from uh, an email that has um, uh, an evil uh, script in it. Um, in in both cases, you can get exposed as a as a user to it, and your session ID may be leaked to a third party. So uh, the easiest way how to test this, uh, whether it works or not, is uh, inserting a little JavaScript snippet uh, into the input fields, and and that snippet has a little alert box that will pop up. So you insert this into an input field and then you click submit. And when you get the data back on the, basically the same screen uh, and a pop-up uh, shows up, um, that means that the site is not protected against the cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, obviously, there are more ways you can test this. And um, there, uh, below uh, in the video description, you'll find some handy links into how to test your site to make sure that it's uh, protected, protected from cross-site scripting attack. Aside from, from uh, testing this manually, obviously there are some tools that you can use. Uh, there are some commercial ones that can be rather expensive. Um, you can also use a debugger proxy, which I have talked about in one of my other videos. Um, and um, it's called Fiddler. 
and it has a little um, XSS plugin that you can um, um, configure in it. And then as you, as you configure your browser to go through the proxy and then to the server, every time you make interaction with the server and their input fields, the proxy will try to uh, do different attacks and see um, if the response that it gets back contains that same JavaScript, and then it will give you a report on it. So how do you prevent cross-site scripting vulnerability on your, uh, when you're creating your software? There are multiple different things you can do. If you are um, a .NET or Java developer, there are frameworks that you can use uh, on the server side to make sure that, that you are properly encoding and decoding the interested input you are getting from the users. Um, if you are an Angular JS programmer, for example, the Angular JS framework already takes care of this on the front end side. It will do the uh, proper encoding, decoding. However, you still have to do it on the server side. The no number one rule when it comes to to what's coming from the browsers is you don't trust it. You always validate it. So you can validate it on the front end if you want, um, but definitely test it um, and validate it on the the back end side. Uh, the the next one is um, you can uh, deploy what's called web application firewall, which will uh, look for, for uh, the input that's coming from the browsers and will try to protect your, your system from it. So that's another layer that you can place in. Um, for example, Amazon Web Services already has um, simple uh, uh, web application firewall that you can put in place. Uh, the next few are a combination of what the server provides to the browser and also what the browser does on its own. Most of the modern browsers have content security policy in place. It basically means that as a web page is rendered in a browser and it has a JavaScript or any other resources that need to be pulled from the, net, from the server, that it has to go back to the server from which the, site, the page was rendered from. So um, that prevents a lot of the cross-site scripting um, attacks because um, a, a script that shows up on that page has to go back home uh, to the originating server unless you tell the browser specifically, oh, okay, you're allowed for this site also to go here and here and here. Um, so it, it's basically whitelisting um, the, uh, the resources on the server side. The next few can also be served from the, the server to the browser. Uh, one, one of them is called HTTP only flag, which basically says that the connection has to be HTTPS and the, the cookies are secured. And, and, and then the next one is, um, XSS protection, uh, which is another secure HTTP header. And um, this one is um, instructing the browser to uh, enable certain XSS protections by default. In summary, cross-site scripting vulnerability is a violation of the browser's um, privacy by exposing session IDs and um, the information that can leak to a third party. And um, it's, it can be hard to detect unless you are really watching for it. Uh, the, new, the modern browsers are really good at um, helping you to protect the session ID, but you have to go extra steps on the back end side to do the extra protection on top of what's happening in the browser. So it's a combination of the back end and the front end working together to make sure that the session ID doesn't leak to a, an attacker. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, if you want to find some additional information about cross-site scripting, you can find it here. Thank you very much. Yeah.